We are live. Thank you, everyone. This is a nice big crowd, loving it. Um, so this is the middle. We are halfway through already with the Holistic Healing Summit. I cannot even believe it. This last two and a day, two and a half days have gone by super fast. We hope you are getting so much value out of the summit and that you know Absolutely. it's going fast for you. Um, if uh, if everyone can mute themselves, that would be amazing. Just that way we don't, you know, you don't pop up on the camera by accident. Um, and yeah, so we are using poll everywhere in order to keep it interactive. So I'm going to share my screen and show you what is that. All right. So you should um, see on your screen here in a minute, this little poll here that says, how are you feeling today? If you mm -hmm. go to pollev.com slash LSSNR888, and we'll put that in the chat for you to link, um, or you can pull out your um, tablet, your mobile device or your phone, and scan this QR code, it will take you to our polling platform. And we're gonna be really interactive. We're gonna ask you questions. We want your feedback. And the speaker is, is gonna take that into their um, into account for their session. So it's gonna be a, a two-way conversation between you and the speaker. And then at the very end, we're gonna ask you to fill out a survey to let us know how the speaker did, and depending on what you guys think, we'll decide, should we bring them back? And I don't know, Jacqueline's kind of stuck with us, so <laughs> y'all can give her all one stars. I'm still gonna have to bring my girl back. Um, but anyway, <laughs> all right, so we got some meh answers. Okay, I, I feel you, I've had a very long day myself. So let's see if we can lift your spirit and um, see what, we can do here with Jacqueline. Hopefully you have heard of Jacqueline, you know who she is because she's amazing. And she is the author of The Lost Labia Chronicles, which is a blog all about LS, mental health and sex. And so she talks about not just her journey, but she dives deep into the research, which she's, she's my nerd. So when I call and I'm like, Jacqueline, do we have a study on this? this? Then yeah, she, so she is the yin to my yang where I'm all crazy. She's the more <laughs> calm one where I'm like, I'm going with my feelings. She's like, where, look, like, here's the study. Okay, so <laughs> let me bring her up. If you would like to pin Jacqueline, um, like I said, hover over her thumbnail and make her big. Jacqueline, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for that introduction. Um, I am so thrilled and honored to be here with all of you tonight. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are at in the world and wherever you are at, if, you know, when you're watching the replays. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. So yeah, I am Jacqueline. I'm the founder of the Lost Labia Chronicles, where I create content about all things lichen sclerosis. But one of the topics that is really near and dear to my heart is pain with sex. So that's what we kind of want to talk about today is pain with sex when you have lichen sclerosis. But before we kind of dive into this presentation, I do want to ask you a few questions. I want to kind of see where everybody is at. Um, so I'm going to have you all open up your poll everywhere and we'll start with a couple questions and then I'll wait for those to kind of roll in and then we will continue on. I see stuff happening, six underway. Let 
All right. I'm going to turn my camera off while you guys start um, doing that and diving deep into Jacqueline's session. Remember to use the chat and the Q&A feature um, to ask your, the, your questions in the Q&A if you um, want to talk amongst yourselves or talk to Jacqueline in general using the chat. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, we're halfway through. Let's just get ready to see how everybody is doing. I know the anticipation. <laughs> it's so cool that you can see in live in real time what's going on. I think somebody changed in their answers. I went from four to six. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second. I'm going to. Yep, no worries. Her. No problem at all. Right. Ooh, I think we are done. Okay, so this is a word cloud. So one of the questions was in one word, how does sex make you feel? So the word cloud tends to pick out the most popular answers and put those in larger font. And then the smaller ones are the less common ones. But some of the big ones that are the, the two big ones that I'm immediately seeing are anxious and pain. And I can definitely, definitely relate to those. Um, nervous, impossible, celibate. So it seems like there's a lot of folks that are currently not able to have sex or it brings up a lot of worry and concern. Okay, and then do we have the results from the next question? Okay, so the next question was, how often are you currently able to have sex? So some answers are weekly. Yay, good for the person or people that said weekly. Zero, I'm not having sex with anyone at this time and not very often due to lack of partner. Some not at all, some not at all. No penetrative sex, not at all. One to two times a month, zero. Okay, so there seems to be a pretty um, pretty heavy leaning towards not having it or not having it frequently. And then coupled with that word cloud, we see that there was a lot of anxiousness around this. So first of all, I want to thank um, everyone that participated in these questions. Um, I honor and witness you in the vulnerability that it takes to not only show up and be at this talk, but to answer these questions that are really quite tough and emotionally charged. So I, I see you and thank you. Now, if you're one of those people on the call or listening to the replay that experiences pain with sex, I want you to know that you are not alone in this. Pain with sex was actually one of my earliest lichen sclerosis symptoms. And this started when I was in my early 20s. So what would happen would be it started for me in my early 20s as kind of mild discomfort. And then that kind of progressed into really intense pain that I would describe sometimes as being excruciating and unbearable. I would often um, tear during sex. So... I've got my nifty little vulva puppet here. If you can see, this is a, a puppet of a vulva. So where I would tear during sex, I would tear kind of around that vaginal opening and that perineum area. And then I would also tear up top around the clitoris. So at that 12 o'clock and that six o'clock areas, those would very frequently tear for me. And often I would go to the bathroom afterwards. And while I was cleaning up, I would see that there was blood on my toilet paper. And the amount of blood wasn't enough to merit a trip to the ER, but it was definitely enough for me to be like, hmm, that seems maybe unusual. But growing up, I never really got sex education. Um, no one really taught me about my vulva. Nobody really taught me about what is, you know, normal down there and, you know, what is and what isn't. So I just kind of figured, okay, I guess this is just my body. I guess I just bleed and tear with sex. Um, 
I would also find that my vagina would feel really raw, almost like someone had scraped on the inside. I would get a lot of stinging and burning when I would pee after sex, like uh, my muscles, my whole body would literally clench up with anticipation because I knew how much it was going to burn when I peed. And it would sometimes take me like three minutes because it was so painful. Um, and again, this just got worse and worse as the years went on. And so this started in my early twenties. And so for the next 10 years, I spent time in and out of the doctor's offices. And I mean, I went everywhere, the university doctors, the hospital doctors, walk-in clinics, STI clinics, and time and time again, I was told the exact same thing. I was told, well, you know, you're pretty small. So your partner's just probably too big for you. I had a couple doctors tell me you're probably not attracted to the person you're with and that's why it's hurting you. I also got told, well, you know, you have anxiety. So the fact that you have anxiety means you're just really, really tense all the time and you just really need to let go and unwind and relax. So maybe try drinking some wine before sex, FYI, not great medical advice, but this is what I was told. Um, and so being told this time and time again was incredibly discouraging and it made me feel really defeated and hopeless because when you see that many doctors, you know, all different types of doctors and they keep telling you this, you start thinking, I guess I'm just stuck with this. I guess I'm stuck not knowing. And I guess I'm stuck with this pain forever. Basically, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of where I thought things, things were going for me. Um, so let's fast forward to April of 2019. Um, it's my birthday and I had plans to go out for dinner with my husband to a Persian restaurant here in Toronto. It's one of my favorites. Um, but before we went for dinner, we had sex, we had sex. I initiated it. I wanted it. Um, unfortunately it wasn't pleasurable. It was very painful, but I pushed through. And the reason I pushed through was because I just, I just wanted to be a normal woman and I've air quoted normal woman because I know rationally speaking that there is no such thing as a normal woman. And I knew that even back then rationally, but my emotions overrided, overrode that, you know, rational concept. And I just wanted to be like, like all my other friends. Everyone with for everyone else, sex seemed so simple and uncomplicated. And I just wanted to celebrate and have sex with my husband for my birthday. Um, but again, it was incredibly, incredibly painful this time. And so I went to the bathroom afterwards to, you know, clean up my makeup and get ready. And I was kind of stifling quiet sobs because I was so upset about how much it hurt. And then we were walking to the restaurant. It's about a 15 minute walk to the restaurant. And I felt the all too familiar paper cut sensations. And that's how I describe my fissures is I have always said that it felt like someone took paper and made a bunch of little paper cuts on my vulva and then poured rubbing alcohol on it. And that burning and stinging that pain was kind of with me as we were walking. My vagina felt so raw and sore and achy. And my, you know, my pelvic floor hurt. I was just, I was, I was a mess and sitting in this beautiful restaurant with the love of my life, with delicious food, surrounded by vibrant and beautiful, colorful artwork and music from Iran. I felt such mixed emotions. I felt happiness and gratitude, but I also felt more hopeless than I had ever felt in my life. And I kind of hit my breaking point at that restaurant. I realized at that point, I said, I don't, I think that might be the last time I will ever have sex with my husband because it was that painful for me. And I knew it just kept getting worse. And I was like, I don't, I don't think I can continue on like this. I don't know what's wrong, but I, I don't, that, that might've been the last time. And that, was really hard for me to kind of even just have that thought come up in my head was was really hard. And then a couple of weeks later, I actually got my lichen sclerosis diagnosis. And when I heard my doctor say, you have lichen sclerosis, 
that kind of solidified those worries that I was having in that restaurant. I felt in that moment, okay, because my doctor said lichen sclerosis can cause pain with sex and sexual complications. To me, that kind of solidified my worries. And then and there, it was almost as if she was telling me, you're never going to have sex with your husband or anybody again. Um, that was just the way that my anxious brain kind of internalized and, and interpreted what she was saying to me. So obviously this had a really huge impact on my mental health. Um, I went home that evening and I, I told my husband, I said, well, I got diagnosed with this at the time. I didn't know what it was. Um, and I said, I think we're going to have to take sex off the table. And I don't know for how long we're going to do that. Uh, truthfully, because of how painful and difficult it was for me, I didn't think we were ever going to be able to have sex again. But that was the kind of conversation that I had. I said, we're going to take it off the table. We're not going to have sex for a while. And of course, he said, okay, no problem. But it was really hard for me to say this. I was like four months into my marriage, 31 years old. I never thought that, you know, <laughs> I don't think any of us thought this was going to be our lives, that we would be dealing with stuff like this, right? You know, growing up, that's that's not the image we have for ourselves. So to kind of reconcile those two was, was really difficult for me. And I talk a lot about, you know, how this impacted my mental health on my blog and on my YouTube. And actually, um, for folks that are interested on my YouTube channel, I do have a three-part interview with my husband where I talk to him about his perspective and what it was like going through this journey with me as the partner of someone with lichen sclerosis. So if folks are interested, you can um, definitely check that out on my YouTube channel, but it was really hard on my mental health for sure. So after about a month of no sex whatsoever, I decided, oh, okay, you know what? No, I'm not ready to throw in the towel yet. I'm 31, I wanna have sex, I do. Um, so I thought, okay, what, what can I do? Well, I did a really quick Google search and Google told me that dilators help. So I went on Amazon. I bought pretty much the first um, pack that I saw that was at a reasonable price, add to cart, and we were on our way. I booked a session with a pelvic floor physical therapist and, so that she could show me how to use them. Um, and I worked with them for about maybe two to three weeks uh, suffice it to say, this was not, it didn't go as I expected. I think I was hoping to just buy the dilators, use them a few times and get back to pain-free sex. Um, or maybe not get back to because I never really had pain-free sex, but I thought maybe this would help me be able to, to tolerate it. Anyways, that didn't quite work out. Um, I ended up stopping after two or three weeks because I was still getting a lot of pain. I think I got up to like the second or third dilator. I could barely insert it. I was in so much pain. I also thought that the dilators were causing me to flare because I was getting a lot of burning and stinging afterwards. So I started making this mental association between the dilators and my symptoms. And with the knowledge that I have now in hindsight, I realize now that that was um, wrong, but that's how I felt in that moment. So I just kind of felt stuck. You know, I was like, all right, well, the dilators aren't working and I don't know what else there is. So I took my dilators, I put them in their little pouch and I put them in my, you know, little bedside table. And that was kind of, that was it. I, I figured at this point, I guess I really am, you know, doomed to have a sexless marriage. So I want to pause here and ask you another question. I want to ask if you've ever tried dilators. So again, if you can head over to the poll everywhere and let me know if you've tried them. I love seeing the answers come in in real time. This is such a cool platform. Yes, currently on the struggle bus. I love the fact know. that it's a lot faster than in YouTube. Like, yeah, like, it definitely YouTube. is. I definitely I noticed like that. Immediate. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, that's really neat. So it seems, and I'll, I'll keep letting them kind of come in, but it seems like we're about 50 50 on no, you haven't tried dilators, or yes, but you're currently on the struggle bus. 
So I can relate. <laughs> I was definitely on the struggle bus for a while with my dilators and then I completely got rid of them because I figured this is just not working for me. So F it. Uh, well, actually this is Google hang. So I could swear technically Google, you know, and we won't get put in Google hang jail, but anyways, I digress. So, um, right. Okay. So now we have a lot of no's. Yeah. Um, so there is a turning point to this story. It does get better. So thank you for hanging with me. All right. So I now want to talk about how things started to turn around for me. So in November of 2020, I attended the very first lichen sclerosis support virtual meetup hosted by Kathy, the very first one. And she's been stuck with me ever since. And at the end of that meetup, she had let us know that she had a membership called Alice Warriors, um, which is basically a community for folks with lichen sclerosis to kind of support each other. And so I, at that point, you know, I was feeling like, okay, I feel confident and I feel like I'm, you know, ready to kind of take control of my lichen sclerosis and of my overall health and healing. So I, you know, and I've always been a big proponent of using as many tools as you can in order to, you know, thrive and be your best self. So I don't know, Kathy, if we can just switch to the next slide. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So in that, in the Warriors, I found Dr. Jeff Coates' book, which is called Pain, uh, Sex Without Pain. Now, Dr. Jeff Code is actually speaking next, and I highly, highly, highly recommend that you stick around for Dr. Jeff Code's talk because she is absolutely phenomenal. She's a pelvic floor physical therapist and has a lot of knowledge in the world of pain with sex. So I picked up that book, I printed it out, I sat, you know, I took my lunch break and I basically devoured that book. And with that, I said, okay. I'm ready, we're gonna try dilators again. So I dusted off my dilators and I got to work and I followed Dr. Jeff Coates protocol and I worked consistently with them. I worked with them for quite a few months. I worked with them almost every day. And in February of 2021, yes, uh, February 2021, I had sex with my husband and for the first time in my life, it was pleasurable and there was no pain. I cried my face off afterwards. I was in, I was just, I was, I was a ball of emotions. Um, I just couldn't believe what had just happened. There was a part of me that was really in shock, right? Because my entire life at best sex was kind of uncomfortable and at worst it was excruciating. I never, ever, ever thought that for somebody with lichen sclerosis, especially someone with lichen sclerosis that dealt with tearing and pain with sex, you know, that really, like, I just thought this is, this is my fate, you know, I'm going to have to learn to not have penetrative sex and be okay with it. So for my body to do what I wanted it to do for so long, it, it was just incredibly emotional for me. And then that that continued because then i had to go to the bathroom and i went to the bathroom and there was no blood afterwards and then i went to pee and it didn't burn and it didn't sting and it always burned and stinged after and again i just i couldn't believe it so i cried again <laughs> and i came out of the bathroom and i'm crying and i'm like it's like are you okay and i'm like i just peed <laughs> and it didn't hurt because it always it it had always hurt and then there was this association that I had made between sex and pain where I thought that sex was going to automatically trigger a flare. So for the, fir the first few days afterwards, I was really nervous that this was going to trigger a flare for me. But one day went by, two days went by, and I still didn't have any symptoms or any problems. And a couple of days later, we decided to have sex again. And again, no tearing, no bleeding, no stinging no pain, it was pleasurable, and no flares. And I've continued to have pain-free, pleasurable sex with my husband ever since that day for over a year now with none of that stinging, none of that hitting a wall, none of my pelvic floor muscles acting all angry and working against me. 
no flaring, nothing like that. And I don't think I'll ever be able to truly convey just how grateful I am for this because I didn't think that this was possible for someone with lichen sclerosis. I really didn't. Um, but, <laughs> but here I am today, um, finally able to, to have the sex that, that I want to have. Um, and so I just want to pause here for a little second again, and I want to ask you another question and we'll watch the results kind of come in in real time. So if I could give you all the secrets and tips and tricks that I learned in my 10 year journey to pain free sex, would you want them? So I will wait for folks to answer. We got some yes, please. I mean, it doesn't tell me how many people are yes, pleasing, but that's okay. I'll give like another 20 seconds before we move on, just in case someone wants to say no, which is totally okay. We'll not be offended. <laughs> your journey is your journey, so. I have a feeling you're not going to get any no's out of this crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so, but you know, I want to just, <laughs> just in case. Okay, I think that's good. I think we can move on. So you can start your journey to pain-free sex today. It took me some time to get to where I am today, but in that time, I did a lot of physical and mental health work, and I did a lot of research on sexual health and lichen sclerosis and pelvic health so that I could get to where I did today. And now I want to share this with all of you. I want to help support you on your journey to pain-free sex because you deserve it. You, each and every one of you, you deserve pain-free sex. So to help you in this, I created a comprehensive ebook on dilators and lichen sclerosis. But this book doesn't just focus on dilators in general. So if you go to Google and look for books on dilators, what you'll find is a lot of books that just talk about pain with sex in general. And then a lot of the market is also um, dilators and vaginismus. Now for folks that don't know, vaginismus is when your pelvic floor muscles involuntarily start to contract and that can cause pain and a kind of hitting hitting a wall sensation so you'll try to insert and people explain it like it feels like you're hitting a wall um, and just fyi you can have both vaginismus and lichen sclerosis but lichen sclerosis is very 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 unique and very distinct so i wanted to create a an ebook that focused explicitly on using dilators for pain-free sex if you have lichen sclerosis. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what you will get in this ebook. So we start off with a general overview where I talk about what dilators are, I talk about what conditions they can help with, how they can help with lichen sclerosis even if penetrative sex isn't the goal, um, what types of dilators there are, the kind of pros and cons of all of those, and I do a little brand option review. But that's not all. You'll also get a deep dive into dilators. Kathy, if we can just um, switch to the next slide so folks can follow along. Thank you. Um, so I have a chapter on when you should avoid using dilators. Now, this chapter is really important because there are times when folks with lichen sclerosis shouldn't be using dilators. So I talk about instances when you might need to wait a little bit before inserting. So that's a really important step. Then I talk about how to know if you're ready to start inserting the dilators. Now, this is also really important because if I ask you, like, do you think you're ready? A lot of us are going to kind of intuitively say, yes, of course I'm ready, because we just want so bad to get to that end goal. We just want to be able to have pain-free sex again. And I get that. Trust me, I do. That's that was part of my fumbling when I first started dilators. I, you know, I rushed into things. So I talk about kind of let's take a step back and really assess where you are to determine if you're ready or not. So there's a chapter on that. I then have a chapter on what to do if you aren't ready to start inserting them. And this is really good because if you're not ready or if you're in one of those situations where you need to avoid using dilators temporarily, there's a host of things that you can do before inserting these to set yourself up for success 
so that you are actually getting the results that you want out of your dilators. And trust me, there's a lot of stuff that you can be doing before even putting these in your body that you can be doing to really start setting yourself up for success. So I talk about that. I then have a chapter on important notes about dilators and lichen sclerosis treatments. So this is also important. Some folks ask, well, can I, I'm getting laser therapy. Can I use dilators if I'm using laser therapy? So I talk through some different types of therapies that folks might be using to treat their LS and considerations that you might need to think about in using dilators. And then I have a whole host of general tips for working with dilators, both before, during, and after. And there's a lot of tips there. And these are things that I've learned through my own journey with dilators and in researching. And this kind of ties into um, Ashley Cruz's talk on Monday, um, because there's a lot of talk about working on regulating the nervous system and calming the nervous system. So there's a lot of bringing together a lot of the concepts that we're learning about at the Holistic Healing Summit this week. So that, you know, we're kind of bringing that aspect in as well in those general tips. I then talk about how to work with dilators, but this chapter, I'm not specifically telling you what to do. Now, the reason for this is that I'm not a pelvic floor physical therapist, and so I'm going to defer to the expert. So in this chapter, what I do instead is I review a couple of the popular protocols for working with dilators. Now, this includes Heather Jeffcoat's protocol, and that's actually the one that I used um, that I was talking about earlier, and she's going to talk about a bit about that in the, in the talk coming up. So Heather Jeffcoat's book beautifully lays out a protocol for working with your dilators. So actually, Heather Jeffcoat's book is incredibly complementary to this book. So this book, you're going to get the lichen sp sclerosis specific information, plus, you know, all of these mental health and nervous system tips and tricks to work on. And then Heather is the protocol. So those two work very, very well together. So I definitely recommend picking up Heather Jeffcoat's book in addition to this book. I also talk about how often you need to be using your dilators. And then I talk about how to clean and store your dilators. I have a list of recommendations for products to clean your dilators. And I also talk about lube and lube recommendations because there are certain lubes that you can't use with certain dilators. So that's very important information to have. I did not have that. And I had some, you know, some messy stuff happening because I wasn't using the right lube. Um, so I definitely talk about that, but that's not all. There is still more. I also include tips for shopping for dilators. Um, Kathy, if you can just go to the next slide, please. Um, I also include tips for shopping with dilators, pelvic health resources, and I have journal templates and journal prompts to help you through the different stages of this journey. So this ebook is loaded with juicy information um, that will help you go from painful sex to pain-free sex. So if you want to get this ebook, it is currently on sale for $19 down from $40. And you can get that at lostlabia.com slash dilator ebook. And our lovely production team is going to pop that link in the chat for you so that you can just open that up and click add to cart and start your journey to pain-free sex today. So to wrap this up, I just want to thank each and every one of you for showing up tonight or today, this afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for trusting me. And um, at the end of the summit talks today, um, you know, I'd like to ask that you do a little something nice for yourself. I know that conversations about painful sex can really bring up a lot of difficult emotions. And so it's really important to do some self-care after um, because this stuff isn't easy. So I now want to open the floor. I think we have about 10 minutes before we're going to log off. So if you have any questions, I think you can use the Q&A feature and or put it in the chat. And then Kathy's going to let me know um, what questions you have. You can ask me about the content in the ebook. You can ask me more specifics about my dilator journey. You can ask me about, you know, why I think I failed the first time because um, 
that was also a pretty important question and i'm also happy to answer any questions about lichen sclerosis and sexual health as i do quite a lot of research in that area thank you so much jacqueline for sharing your story and for creating these resources um jacqueline looks at all of the research like i said she reads it and she she has a way of being able to interpret it in a way that us lay people me can understand um, she is my brain um okay so we have a question it says when having penetrating sex first i enjoy it then i don't feel anything and then rapidly it turns to pain mm -hmm. Do you have have you ever heard from other people having this kind of issue um, I haven't personally, but it just sounds like there's a bit of a delayed reaction there. And it sounds like the vaginal and pelvic floor muscles are kind of contracting too much. And there's just a little delay going on. There could be quite a few reasons. So there could just be a little bit of a delayed result. So sometimes, I mean, actually, I personally have experienced something similar ish before where it felt okay but then after i was like oh no i'm sore this is painful that's usually a muscular issue if it's on the outside and a vulvar if it's on the no sorry <laughs> vulvar issue if it's on the outside and vaginal if it's on the inside um i would suggest checking in with a pelvic floor physical therapist to see if it's a muscular issue or something else Thank you. And yeah, I just put in the chat, if you guys could use the um, Q&A feature so I don't lose your questions um, in the chat, that would be um, really helpful. Thank you. All right. Uh, did we have another one? Yeah. Did you need to size down using the dilators because of feeling sore the next day? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, yes, I have had to do that. Um, um, so sometimes our bodies are, are, you know, they're constantly changing. And some days I would feel that I was um, tighter than other days. Some days, like, let's just say I met dilator three. Some days dilator three would go in real easily. And other days, man, it just didn't seem to want to go in. I seem to be having more resistance and more difficulty. So whenever I would hit that, I would go back down a size. Now, typically when you're using dilators, you don't, some discomfort will be normal right because we're coming to this because we have pain with penetration or insertion of any kind um so some kind of pain or some kind of discomfort is normal but you don't want that pain to be too high so typically pelvic floor physical therapists and doctors alike will say somewhere between a level three and lower is okay if it's higher than a level three though you don't want to push through that pain because that actually reinforces these negative associations between your brain and the nervous system, who is not, you're just reinforcing the fact that anything penetrative is gonna cause pain. So what we're trying to do in this process with dilators is actually desensitize the brain from coding any kind of penetration as painful. So that's why you don't wanna push through. And if there are some days where you need to size down that is totally okay i have done that plenty of times i actually still use my dilator sometimes just like for maintenance just my mental health it makes me feel better when i <laughs> use them a little bit and even then sometimes i don't go to my largest one because i'm just not feeling it in that day so that's totally okay thank you all right someone says um i understand that the physical improvements helped but how did you get past the mental side of expecting pain? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And I definitely have a really deep explanation for that in the ebook. I talk about all the different mental health resources and tips and tricks that I kind of tapped into. Um, but a couple quick things that really helped me. One was seeing a sex therapist. So think of your normal talk therapist um but instead they specialize in sexual health and sexual dysfunction so see seeing and working with them joining support groups and then really using all of the tools that i list out and lay out in that ebook for 
calming my nervous system, breaking some difficult associations, you know, a real, a lot of relaxation techniques, but there was definitely a lot of mental health work that occurred and that in my opinion needs to occur. You know, you can't, it can't just be the physical. It can't just be, we put a dilator in. There's a lot of mental stuff that we need to do as well. So definitely check that out in the ebook. Yes, and definitely check out um, Shauna Farambaugh's talk tomorrow night. Um, and she's going to be talking on this subject as well. All right, so next question is, I feel my pain more on the skin inside of my labia, labias and entrance of my vagina. It doesn't feel like my vagina needs to be stretched. Do you know that problem and what can be done against these issues? Mm -hmm. So I can't give medical advice, but what that could be is, so it could be a few things. It could just be a lichen sclerosis thing. It could be that there are some micro tears and fissures that you can't see on the labia that are causing that pain. And so if that's the case, then, you know, the focus would be on finding a treatment plan that really works to reduce the inflammation um, and get those fissures healed. Another thought is that sometimes um, when there is pain and you've resolved a lot of the lichen sclerosis, so there's no fissures, there's no discoloration, physically by looking at the vulva, it looks healthy. But if there is still pain, what can sometimes be going on is there's actually a nerve issue. So the nerves are actually over firing and they're basically, you know, there's a disconnect between the brain and the sensation down there. So the brain is like they're, they're firing, they're over firing pain signals when there's actually no pain to be there. Um, so that can also be a, a thing. And so I think that in this case, I would recommend that you get evaluated to see, is this lichen sclerosis, is it nerve, or is it something else? Um, just so that you know what you're working with, because you, once you know what you're working with, that's when you can start, you know, really working with a plan and a team. So, so that's what I could do. And, and um, if you missed uh, Ashley Cruz, uh, presentation on Monday, definitely catch that replay because she also talks about pain when they're, you know, that the vulva looks healthy. So why am I having pain when the lichen sclerosis is kind of cleared? Great point. All right. Do you need to continue maintenance use of dilators once pain-free sex has been experienced? Ooh, I love this question. Um, you don't have to, but it might depend on how frequently you have sex. So I'm just going to share that personally, I kind of use them on maintenance. I use them about once or twice a week. Sometimes I don't. On weeks that I have more sex, then I typically won't use the dilators because I kind of feel like they're doing that work to maintain the space that I want. And it also just honestly comes down to individual preferences. So I'm a very, very, very anxious person. And my head is always wondering and worrying and panicking. So for me personally to use them as maintenance, it helps kind of settle those worries that creep in and it just keeps me feeling safe and happy and healthy. So that's why I use them. But if you're having sex regularly, then you could potentially put them away. Oh, I was just about to say, we don't have any more questions. And then when it popped up, here we go. I feel like my tightness comes from a ring inside of the vagina right after the opening. Did you have the same issues? That's like right inside. Okay, so I'm not sure if I ever felt like a ring per se. Um, but I know that I had a lot of pain at the vestibule and very shortly after. So here's one of my dilators. And then I know this is kind of hard Use to see. Use it on your vagina puppet. I mean, your vulva <laughs> puppet. My puppet has a vagina. It has well, a, yeah, the, a, a white vagina. You can use the dilator on the on the puppet. Yeah. yeah there yeah. we go. Okay. White too. So if I was inserting about that much, then I would start having pain. So you see, I didn't go very deep. I'll do this slower. Then around there is where I started feeling that tightness and that resistance. Um, 
So I'm not sure if that's the, the ring that you're speaking to, but I definitely had a lot of tightness and resistance and discomfort in there. And I should also say that a lot of why we use dilators also, and I do have a, a post on my, um, on my blog, on my website, where I talk about all the reasons why, all the ways in which dilators can help with uh, lichen sclerosis because it can't, there, there are things in addition to, um, to painful sex that it can help with. So it can also help with fusing and scarring and feeling more empowered and desensitizing the brain from some of these connections that it's made long-term because of trauma to that area. So there's, there's quite a lot of reasons and ways in which um, dilators can be really helpful. Awesome. Well, we don't have any more questions and we are almost out of time. I was just going to say we have to wrap it up anyways, I yes, think, because uh... <laughs> so that was perfect. Um, OK, so I saw a little bit in the chat. Let me see. Uh, OK. I think that's great. All right. You did amazing. Thank you all so much for um, just working with us we're going to put the link to dr jeff Coates' session in the chat give us a second and um let us ah, there we go yeah don't 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 uh give us a minute while we um get set up there so jacqueline we you is we thank you <laughs> Y'all can unmute and just give Jacqueline some love. Let her know how much you 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 thank her, and then um, yeah, let us get set up over there. And if you want to get off and um, open the the chat over there, I mean, open the other link over there. Go grab a drink, go pee, um, and then we'll let you in as soon as we're set up over there. Give us uh, five minutes. And we will be ready for you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you, everyone, again, for showing up and uh, spending some time with me this evening.